Hello, I'm Sora Luxon, and this is Magic Lesson number 53, Incense and Common Sense. Some email question answers today. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. I'm going to start with some simple questions. Uh, one of them asks, is your name Sarah? I don't understand how you pronounce your name. How do you spell it? My name, magical title used on this podcast channel is Soror Luxon. So that's S-O-R-O-R. -O -R. And Soror really just means sister in Latin. Like in the word sorority. The same type of interpretation there where freighter in the word fraternity means brother and it becomes brotherhood. Same idea. So it's sister, Luxon. It's just a way traditional ancient mystery school people, when we take name titles that to use in public and also in private, we tend to use that that description, that 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 first word in our names. Why doesn't your channel have a musical intro? I like musical intros on other channels better than yours. Okay, that's wonderful. Music is wonderful. Uh, this is actually a really easy question for me to answer. My channel doesn't have a musical intro or a lot of moving animation. It doesn't have heavy marketing or commercialization because I'm not interested in commercializing my little podcast to get you to come back to it in a state of constant mental addiction, which is what that actually is doing to you. In layman's terms, I'm not profit seeking from truth seekers here, so I don't choose to place my energy uh, or expend my time on making my YouTube lessons mentally persuasive advertisements. I'm not looking to share opinion or persuade people or have you buy t-shirts from me. So this is really more for my fellow Illumined and those seekers. You know, I'll do me. And if you happen to take something useful from anything I've said, all the better. If not, that's fine, right? That's a necessary path as well and totally up to you. And of course, there's nothing wrong with music. Um, I just don't choose to place my energy there. This is more of an educational type system <laughs> than it is, you know, your morning cartoon on Saturday. Next question. I consider myself a student of yours and of hermeticism. I really love how straightforward you are about the reality of occulted magic and common sense rational at the same time. Thank you and you're welcome, of course, blessed be. I've begun work as a solitary practitioner with the book you mentioned and want to thank you for mentioning it. No problem. Already I know this is what I was meant to find. I know I'm not supposed to engage in other developed practices while in the initiate grade, but it does say reading other materials is fine. Yes, that's true. I've been reading a lot of ritual Egyptology texts, nice use of that word, and how they used incense for healing and embalming practice, but cannot find anything specific about the science of incense. Do you have any book recommendations on this or knowledge from your own studies that you share? Do I have book recommendations? So for incense, there is a book called Uses and Abuses of Plant-Derived Smoke by Pinocchio, Jefferson, and Havens. Um, despite that title being somewhat off-putting, I just heard myself say it, and it sounds very negative, doesn't it? Uses and abuses of smoke. Um, but it's a wonderful compendium of information on the subject, including history up to modern times. And it discusses recreational, medicinal, ceremonial uses of smokes, incenses, vapors, perfumes, essential oils, burned oils derived from plants. It's pricey, that book. I think it's around 90 or $100, somewhere in there which seems very high, but it has many of the index refer references for uh, scholarly papers, you know, scientific studies and papers attached to the subject over the years. So that index, that 
codicy for further research is a large part of what you're paying for inside of that book, the ability to look up where every reference is coming from. Um, and it covers more than just incense as well. You have the neurotropic properties of tobacco or the asthma treatment properties of datura. So a lot of different herb lore as it relates to medicine and smoke specifically. If you can't or don't want to buy that, there are some other avenues for study on this subject. Many ovates and druids are incredibly well-schooled on this specific type of herb lore and even more advanced uses and applications. So if you have access to any druid that's willing to talk mistletoe with you for a few hours, that's a great resource of well-versed, respectable, applicable occulted knowledge. Not all of us know a druid though. So if you don't have this book, or can't buy it, or a druid on hand, and they're out there, you can look for them, right? They are around. Again, you could search this kind of information on the internet if you can't, you know, find yourself a druid. And as we all know, focus and application of your own personal energies is what will generate the most power around potential arenas of inquiry for you. So taking the time and effort to painstakingly search out the information you wish to acquire, that's only going to make it more meaningful to you and possibly easier to absorb. Just be careful, as I'm sure you know, to confirm the resources that information is credited to as being legitimate. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, obviously. When it comes to the science of what incense does or what an herb does, you know, look to the source of the information and see if it's credible. You don't have to be a biochemist to learn that frankincense works molecularly to decrease rot. Uh, but it is best if you make sure the person making that claim is an accredited biochemist that you can trust if you're going to place faith in that information and seek to use it somehow. As for my personal wealth of education on this subject, some trade secrets, right? Some, some very high level occult secrets. Um, but when it comes to the subject of suff fumigations, right? Fumes, specifically incense, it would take days of podcast or am I writing a book for you on it for what I can or would be willing to say publicly. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go into detail. But since you are interested in the tradition um, or the traditional Egyptian application of vapors and magical rites, which very often also, as you probably already know, contained medicinal purposes, healing purposes, I will hint to you to get you started on your journey of inquiry, to begin with learning about frankincense, sandalwood, and myrrh. But out of those three, start with frankincense. There's a reason magi remind, 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 you know, the non-initiated, the public, of its name and use. In stories, in churches, in the Bible, all over the East, in just about every tradition. Frankincense is a powerful, a sacral ambient and possesses, among other wondrous characteristics, scientifically verified antimicrobial properties. It literally purifies what we breathe in sacred spaces by reducing airborne microbial count levels of inhalable bacteria and fungi. Frankincense is a wonderful magical tool of right and way and a very interesting place to begin your studies if you're already intrigued by the immense value of ancient Egyptian, of ancient Egypt's codi, codex of occulted information. So I would hint at that, right? That's my suggestion. Start there if you're going to really start getting into it. Now let's talk common sense. The world is not ending. Or in another way of thinking, the world is always ending and rebeginning, right? But in a very common kind of speaking way, in, in normal parlance, the world isn't ending today. It just isn't. Big unknowns and obstacles 
create uncertainty. They certainly create more uncertainty in the masses, um, the less educated and the less well-trained you are, right? The more uncertainty you're likely going to react to. Everyone feels uncertainty, but it's the reactiveness that really creates this penchant for fear. Occultists tend to be more grounded and comprehend that, yes, things can be big and daunting and ever-changing. The only constant is change. But we like that, way right? We know it and we like it. Um, occultists also know that external control, say over one's environment, or how a new sickness spawns, control over that is the illusion. Which is why we focus on internal selfdom and internal control, which isn't an illusion the way external control is. Know thyself. Common sense tells us stuff happens. Adapt, evolve, overcome or don't, but stuff happens. And anxiety, panic, allowing fear to dictate our behaviors doesn't serve us or those around us well while stuff is happening. So big, big one sentence type magic lesson for today. Where magic, magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, magic, is oneself being willed, willing oneself to continue walking forward with grace the common sense calm, smiling at the oncoming storm. The one sentence lesson is, will that, and you will create interpretable change as you will it to be. Courage in the face of chaos begins with not allowing oneself to become that chaos. You're not going to have space to do anything else if you're being reactive. Choosing active mastery over self rather than a reactive state of being is where you have to begin. Is a lot going on in the world right now? Yeah. Should you be aware of it? Absolutely, right? There's no reason not to be well-informed about anything. Um, Should you be making decisive choices on how to behave given changing circumstances, new information moving forward? Sure. Should you be panicking? fearful, or stressed about any of it? No. And if you simply aren't progressed yet enough in your magical practices to kind of have that mainstay of maintaining control, maintaining calm, because it takes time. It takes a great deal of experience to get there. There are so many subconscious influences on us and so many preconditioned behaviors that we don't yet comprehend in ourselves, especially when we're beginning in our occulted practices, right? So if you aren't quite to where you can maintain a constant state of calm, even as it seems like everything's going crazy in the world, that's okay. (laughs) You know, having that expectation of yourself is part of the problem. It's okay to not be perfect. Most people aren't actually No one is. So consider allowing yourself more time for things like your middle pillar ceremony, if you do that. Bask in the light longer. Consider extra meditations, gifts to yourself to stabilize and heal worries, uneasiness, or extra apprehensions you may be experiencing right now. That's good advice no matter what's going on. That's good advice even if everything is fine. There's never a good reason not to give yourself the gift of an extra five minutes of meditation. And a little something extra, just a quick tip, trick, like a little trick I give my neophytes to use to proactively disengage from stress when they sense it in themselves. You can simply raise your right thumb or index finger to your right nostril the right side of your nose and close it, apply pressure, just a little bit of pressure to close that side of your nose off, right? Take three deep, slow inhales and exhales only through the left side of your nose. Much like the practice of using a bag to decrease oxygen flow when someone has a panic attack, 
This is a smaller, much subtler way that can be applied whenever you want without having to be in a full on state of anxiety, right? This will immediately calm the mind, body, lung and capillary system. It'll bring your heart rate down. Just level your system out for 60 seconds or so. It's actually a fairly ancient yogic technique. So like most ancient master wisdom, it has massive applications and benefits. But it's also just something small and simple and safe that we can do to bring about reaffirmed mindfulness, right? Reaffirmed conscientiousness. And to allow ourselves the pleasant sensation of release and rebalance whenever we happen to be feeling edgy. It's discreet, right? It's easy to hide, like if you're stuck at work <laughs> in front of a computer monitor, maybe. And it feels wonderful. So why not do it, right? So that's my little tip. That's my little trick to help you over the next few weeks and months if you need that extra little moment of calm. Until next time.